Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to dive into a practical example that demonstrates how to create a like button component using React in the use state hook. Here is how the application works. When the like button is clicked, the number of likes gets updated right on the screen. I will show you step by step how to make this like button in React and how to use it in your own projects. By the end of this video, you will know how to create interactive buttons. Let's get started. Before we jump into the code, it's essential to have a solid understanding of what state means in the context of React. Think of state as the dynamic, ever-changing core of your components. It is capable of storing various types of information like numbers, strings, arrays, objects, etc. The critical point here is that this data is not fixed. It can evolve and adapt as your component goes through its life cycle which is a fundamental concept in React development. For example, imagine you are creating an application that fetches data from an external API. While the data is being fetched, you want to display a loading signal to the user. To achieve this, you introduce a state variable called loading, which is initially set to true when the request begins. Now when the API responds with the data, loading is updated to false and the data is displayed on the screen. In this scenario, the data itself represents a form of state because it transforms from undefined or an empty list before the request to something meaningful once it's loaded. Consider another scenario where something goes wrong, maybe a network error occurs during the request. In such cases, you want to inform the user about the error and possibly take some corrective action. To handle this, you need to track the state of your component, is it in a loading state, has an error occurred or is the data ready? This is the beauty of state. It keeps you informed about what's happening inside your component. Now that we have a good understanding of what state is, let's proceed and implement the use state hook. In this React application, there is a component named like button that renders a simple user interface with the title like button and the button labeled like which is placed inside a div. It is a very basic component without any interactive functionality. To add some interactivity, we first need to introduce state to our component. To do that, we will import the use state from React. Simply add a comma after React and wrap use state in curly braces. Now let's create our state variable. To do this, we will define a constant using the const keyword and open an array. Here is the deal with use state. It returns an array containing two elements. The first element in the array is the current state. In our case, it will be likes because we want to display the number of likes. The second element in the array is the updater function, which allows us to modify the state. In our case, it will be the set likes function. Just a quick heads up. When it comes to naming your state variable and its updater function, you are not limited to using likes and set likes. However, there is a widely adopted best practice in the React community and that's to give your state variable a descriptive name and name the updater function by adding a set prefix. This naming convention not only makes your code more readable, but also clearly signals that you are working with the state. In our example, we have followed this convention with likes and set likes. To set this up, we simply assign it to use state and add parentheses. Inside those parentheses, we can specify default values. For now, we will set this default value to zero if you don't provide a default value, it will be undefined. Now let's create a function called toggle like and it's going to be an arrow function. The primary purpose of this function is to toggle the state of the like feature. In simple terms, it will either increase or decrease the number of likes based on the current state. So when you click the like button, it either adds a like or removes one depending on the existing state. It's all about making the like button interactive. Inside our function, we are going to add a crucial piece of logic. We use a conditional statement, which is the if statement, to check if the current number of likes is greater than zero. In other words, if likes is greater than zero. When this condition is met, we open a pair of curly braces and take action. We call the setLikes function to decrease the number of likes by one. In simple terms, this piece of code handles the situation when the item is already liked, ensuring that Clicking the like button once more will reduce the number of likes by one. Now within the else block, we are adding another piece of code. Here we are checking for the scenario when the item has not been liked. 
if this condition holds true a specific line of code comes into play set likes likes plus 1 this line essentially increases the number of likes by 1 we achieve this by calling the set likes function and it ensures that when you click the like button for an unliked item the like count goes up by 1 so this piece of code covers the case when you are starting to like an item and it ensures that your like count goes up with each click now our function is all set let's integrate it with our button using on click attribute to make it come to life but before we witness the application in action there are a few more details to take care of specifically we want to display the number of likes right in our user interface to achieve this we will enhance our user interface by adding some jsx code this will enable us to dynamically show the number of likes as it changes inside the p tag we are handling how we display the number of likes using the likes state variable while ensuring proper grammar this is done with curly braces and a conditional statement here is how it works if like is not equal to 1 we add an yes to make it plural otherwise we display it in a singular form this way our code dynamically adjusts the display for a smoother user experience this condition first checks if the value of likes is not equal to 1 if it is not equal to 1 it adds an yes to the end of the string to make it likes however if likes is equal to 1 the condition adds an empty string effectively making it like this approach allows our code to dynamically adjust the display ensuring that it's grammatically correct and visually appealing it's all about those little details that enhance the user experience now let's head over to the browser and see it in action when you click the like button here is what happens by clicking the like button the like count increases you will see the number of likes go up right on the screen but that's not all If you decide to click the like button again, it decreases the like count. This dynamic behavior ensures that the like button provides real-time feedback based on your interaction. This feature is incredibly valuable for users as it helps them keep track of the number of likes on the web page, adding a layer of interactivity and engagement that makes your application more user-friendly. With this, you have just learned the basic way of using the use state hook in React. This hook empowers you to create and change information commonly known as state in your components and you can even set an initial value for that information. This knowledge is super important because most applications need to keep track of data that changes. With this use state hook you are now ready to add some features to your application. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more amazing content. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.